Hello, everybody, and welcome to It's Gorgomatic. We review the NFL divisional playoff games, and it was wild. I'm Tim McNiff. There he is, Kevin Gorg, a.k.a. Gorgomatic. Uh, you had uh, duties on Saturday. It was hockey day here in Minnesota. You were down in Mankato. You braved the cold. They threw a snowstorm at you. And then you had to tra tra travel back in the midst of all that. What did that all look like? Well, it's always a great day. And I had gone back and forth Friday to be a part of the uh, festivities with the banquet and see some of the teams practice. I was working a wild game from uh, XL remotely on uh, Friday night. And so Saturday, you know, it always goes by in a blank, but it's a long day. You know, you're getting down there fairly early in the morning. Uh, we got off the air, at least on location in Mankato, a little before 8 o'clock at night. And unfortunately, I mean, it looked great on TV, but there was a pretty giant snowstorm that started roughly at dinner time and worked its way through the, uh, the later part of the evening. And I know you've been d down and back to Mankato hundreds of times in your life covering the Vikings and everything else and training camp back in the day. And you know what 169 is like? Uh, there's no lights and it's pretty wide open. And, and if it's snowing, it's windy. Uh, it was a drive that normally takes me an hour and 10 minutes. It took me about two hours and 15 minutes, got back safe, which is really the bottom line. Mm. But after, uh, working a full day, I, I have to tell you, I got home and I, and I crashed and, uh, yesterday I was moving a little slow. I'm, I'm in my mid fifties now, so I don't bounce back like I used to, but, uh, just really entertained by the football, especially yesterday. Cause I didn't get to dive in as much on uh, on Saturday and I thought all four games were spectacular and you know what a big football fan I am and I, I had no real rooting interest outside of Josh Allen those games uh I mean I, I could rewind them and watch them back again yeah um and each of them each of them told a different story remarkable that they ended out you know ended up the way they did three games in a row last second kick to win, won by the road team in each uh, instance. Last game, the most unlikely scenario, uh, the drive to set up a field goal to send it into overtime. And then the only mistake Josh Allen makes the entire night, and you can't even call it a mistake, that the coin just dropped the other way. I mean, right. I, I just don't see Kansas City's defense stopping him or Buffalo any more than the Bills could have stopped Kansas City at that point. It's just unfortunate in the NFL even the people that are pushing back against us on social media last night going, quit whining about it. I'm just like, no, fix it. No team should end their season, especially a season that was as good as Buffalo had and as great as they played last night. They needed, they deserved, they should have had a chance to have the football one more time. And I think the NFL, and and I'm I'm not all I'm not as far as you are to that point because I think what it used to be was the real disaster. I think, you know, when you and I were growing up and we were young people. Um, people might not know this that are in their 20s now, but it used to be if you won the coin football, you do is gain like 25, 30 yards and kick a field goal, and then that was it. And I thought that was extremely unfair uh, to these teams. Now they they force you to stop somebody. It's the first touchdown, and if each team gets a possession, then it's the first points. It's significantly more fair. And I'll say this. I think in the regular season, the way it's set up right now, I'm totally cool with it. But I do think that when you get to the playoffs and or Super Bowl, uh, playing a regular 15-minute quarter should decide the game. And that way you leave nothing uh, to uncertainty, to the luck of the draw with the coin flip. Everybody's going to get their chance. And, you know, I think playoff-wise, you, you don't care how long it goes. Your ratings are going to be through the roof. So I think the NFL would be on board with it. Regular season, I think it gets to be too much football for these guys as you continue to add – weeks right now we've got 17 games we're likely going to 18 you're taking a lot of tread off the tire during the regular season but i'm with you on the playoffs play a 15 minute quarter let the dust uh, settle when it does classic game last night uh everybody knows it uh, by now but it was just a remarkable capping up remarkable weekend let's run through the games we can talk about them uh, as we go through we started it seems like a week ago yes. saturday's games seem like they were a week ago <laughs> so um Bengals played at, at Tennessee, the Titans in this game, given three and a half, over under 47. Before I let you go on that, I just want to say the very first play from scrimmage, you know, they they out, they just overthought it. They just are like, everyone's going to think we're going to hand the ball to Henry. So we're going to throw a play action pass, you know, mm -hmm. and get it picked off. I look at my wife and I go, that is classic over coaching yep. right there. Yep. And, and they were playing from behind the rest of the afternoon. Joe Burrow sacked nine times and got up and delivered a win. We talked about the two kids that played last night. 
he if he's not in that club, he will be soon. Yeah, he's he's destined for greatness. We've been talking about this guy all year long. Hard not to pull for Joe Burrow. He's a winner. Uh, he's great for the NFL. We've been watching him uh, at the college level, and he's not intimidated by this stage because he's played in bigger games in college. I'm telling you, when you play in the SEC and you go into Alabama and you're the quarterback for LSU, that's a bigger game. That's bigger pressure for a college kid. So this is not going to intimidate Joe Burrow, and he showed it. And, you know, as we tie it all back to Gorgomatic, I made two bad plays here. I thought Tennessee, with the experience and the rest, was going to hammer him. I didn't respect Joe Burrow and the Bengals. It's my mistake. There are games that we're going to talk about, like last night's game with Buffalo, where I thought I made the right play. This was a game where I was on the wrong side, and I doubled down thinking Tannehill would have multiple touchdowns. I should have bet multiple interceptions because he showed, and, and again, I'm not trying to throw dirt on this guy, but he showed he's not at that level. There's a level you need to get to to win in this league at the playoffs. We've seen it with Tom Brady. Uh, we see it with Patrick Mahomes now every single year. Brian Tannehill's not at the par, and he had his best weapon back. The distraction that Derrick Henry should create, he threw three picks, no excuses. I deserve to lose both those plays, and I tip my hat to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. They're going to be a handful uh, moving forward. I agreed, and and I love the fact that uh, Cincinnati has, has realized what they have in Jamar Chase. They've seen enough of San Francisco, and they're like, you know what? Chase is, is built probably even a little sturdier than Debo Samuel is. I mean, built more like a running back than Debo Samuel is. Get him let's the get, ball. Let's get him the ball. And uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see all the ways they try to make that happen and get the ball to Joe Mixon. So you're right. They're, they're going to provide some, some issues. You know what's funny was the play that they ran, the little screen that uh, Chase took 75 yards hmm. to downfield. If Tyler Boyd was faster – you know, because he, he, he outran his blocking. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> just ran into his own guy, Tyler Boyd. He picks it up. You know what he should have done was put his hand in, which I used to tell my running backs to do. If that guy's in front of you and you you put his hand, your hand, in his back, and you push him. If he doesn't move with you, go around him. You know, he, yeah, that's right. You got you. You have that fast to make that decision. Are you, is he your convoy or do you got to jettison your convoy and just make it happen? And unfortunately, he stayed behind Tyler Boyd and. And got caught, but uh, anyway, you said your prop play was Tannehill, and and um, I need two I touchdown this, passes. I mean that that should have happened, and and I thought he had a really bad game, really bad game, and and he, he's done this too often. You know, mm -hmm. well, but he had that catch. You know, the corner that AJ Brown made the one handed catch is a great throw. He he cost them this game. I mean, you could say maybe coaching did to some extent too, but this puts Tennessee, I think, back in the mix. I don't necessarily think for Kirk Cousins because I don't know that that's an upgrade and it probably may, might even be a neutral move or a downgrade, but I think that makes him looking in the draft. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, they've got to upgrade that position. I, I think Cousins is far superior to Tannehill, but uh, I still think Cousins is a middler. You know, I look at Cousins as that 12 to 15 range. I look at Tannehill in that 20 to 30 range, probably pushing now closer to 25 as far as depth of quarterbacks in this okay. league. He just – he just doesn't do it for me. And he's got the best running back in football. He's got one of the best 10 receivers in football. And he has games like that when it matters. And I've seen this movie too many times. And, you know, they, they've they got to figure something out down there. And, and maybe you take a chance on a Drew Locke with Denver, make a deal with them. Uh, I know he's looked horrible <laughs> in Denver, but I, I still think, uh, you know, he was drafted to be a, a pretty big star in this league. Maybe you can fix him uh, with a new system. I don't know. But Tannehill's not the answer. We, we clearly know that after watching this week. Well, we'll get into this in a minute, but I think uh, Drew Locke more likely uh, competing for a job in, in Green Bay. You mm -hmm. know, that 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 could come come about. But you had Tannehill as your you, plus one and a half touchdown passes. There's his line, 15 to 24, 220, the big number, the three picks. And, yeah. and one of them coming right down in the red zone just, just absolutely can't happen. Uh, better call thinking Bigham. She took uh, Burrow. Over 272, that was never in doubt. He was pushing no. that number in the first half. They got conservative in the second half. He still finished just 28 to 37, 348. Oof. One touchdown, sacked nine times. The only other time I remember seeing something similar, I was coaching at YZ. We sacked um, the New York Islanders quarterback or, or uh, captain right uh, now. Anders Lee. Yeah, we sacked Anders Dina. Lee nine times and lost the game nine to three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to pull that off. And and to Joe Burrow's credit and to Anders Lee credit, you get up, you keep playing, you hope for the best at the end, and Joe Burrow got the last laugh. 
and that's a man. And we, we uh, as coaches, we all ran across the field to shake Andres Lee's hand. We did the next year, too, because we mm-hmm. beat him the next year. But we were like, we – we want you, you know, I mean, yeah, he's remarkable. We've watched him forever since then. So, yeah. So the game that night, uh, you're like, wow, could you have a better game? Five minutes left. San Francisco's done, dead in the water. They block a punt, recovered, <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> the whole thing just flips. Jimmy Garoppolo has won uh, four playoff games where he has uh, thrown one touchdown pass and four interceptions. How about that? For well, stat line. Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo looks a lot better off the field in street clothes than he looks on the field <laughs> playing his position. There are young women all over the place where their hearts flutter when they see him, and there are coaches where their hearts get into their uh, into their chest pumping pretty good when they watch him play because he he is that guy. But you know what? He's a game manager. He he's not asked to do much more than run a couple times and figure out how to get Debo Samuel involved. And and this game was won by their defense and special teams. You can say Green Bay lost it with their special teams. Whatever you want to do. I was hustling home uh, in that snowstorm from Mankato, and I knew the game was going to come down to the wire. I was trying to get home for, in my mind, what was going to be San Francisco's last drive to see if they could get down there and force overtime. And as I approached my spot here in Minnetonka, um, I had clicked over to listen to the wild game, and I came back, and I hear Ben Lieber, uh, who doesn't get, you know, as a sideline reporter on that national broadcast, doesn't get too wound up, but, I mean, his voice was elevated they blocked the punt, and I'm like, no way, it's tied. I'm like, this is so cool. So I got home in time to see uh, how the game finished up. And, you know, I loved uh, after the game on Twitter seeing the the video of Robbie Gould during warm-ups. Green Bay had that tunnel of players as they did their introductions, and it carved into San Francisco's practice area. And a lot of times kickers will just pick – Okay, no, I lost. KG, the the, sig- the signal has uh, frozen up. I'm kind of waiting for it to become unfrozen, but uh, he appears to be lost in in time right now. At least to me, he, he, maybe something I'm just seeing on my end. But right now, that is what I'm seeing on my end. So I'm going to take uh, Kevin out of the feed for just a moment and allow him to try to get back into this. So I'm going to remove him from the stream and just talk about that Green Bay game and and the plays that were made in that game and hope that Kevin can come back and join us. And he just tried and that didn't work. So we'll see about that. So his plays were 49ers plus six and the under at 47 and a half. And, uh, and he got both of those. So he hits them both. He had a prop play in that game. Obviously the final score of the game was uh, 13, 10, uh, 49ers. He had a prop play in that game. He had Elijah Mitchell uh, going uh, touchdown. That did not happen. 17 carries for 53 yards, but unfortunately no uh, touchdown. Uh, Carla Bigham, the senator, also had a a prop play from this game. She went with the other uh, San Francisco running back slash wide receiver. Debo Samuel, the senator, calling a a touchdown for Samuel. Uh, He tried. He did his best for her. Uh, He had uh, 10 carries, 39 yards. Three uh, catches for 44 yards, unfortunately, does not find the end zone in either time. So KG hits uh, his two plays on the game. Neither hits their prop play on that particular contest. So far, no KG uh, back joining us yet again. Hopefully he can uh, make that happen. Um, We had the game, uh, first game yesterday, Rams, Bucks, line Tampa Bay given three over under a 48 and a half. KG's playing that game. He had the Bucs given the three and the over in this game. So he had two plays here. He uh, hits the over and uh, and hits the uh, play right on the nail. Uh, the result, 30-27 Rams. And um, oh, the Bucs were given three, so I guess he was one and one in that. So it goes one and one on the game plays. This prop play, he, uh, he hits that one. He had Tom Brady going over. 285 and a half passing yards, which I honestly thought was a lot uh, going into this game. A little unsure about this, but the GOAT, 30 for 54, 329, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, Thinking Bigham, no problem with hers. She took a touchdown for Cooper Cup and gets that cup on the day, uh, being Cooper Cup-like, nine catches, 138 yards, 
and one touchdown. Leaves us with uh, one game for last night, that the biggie, of course, and that one, Kansas City was given two with an over-under of 54 and a half, and KG's play was the Bills plus two. Uh, well, he was right um, all the way through uh, regulation, lost it in overtime, final score uh, was uh, 42-36 in favor of the Kansas City Chiefs. He did have a prop play in this game, a guy that I played on multiple DFS uh, plays to no avail. Uh, Dawson Knox for the touchdown. Uh, that did not happen. Um, Knox on the day, just two catches for nine yards, had a couple drops early on, and, and you saw Josh Allen uh, go away from him, go away from Stefan Diggs, and uh, just fi- figured in on uh, Gabriel Davis. Um, watch Super Draft at 11 a.m. I gave you a lineup. I gave you a lineup on Friday featuring Gabriel Davis. How about that? And uh, thinking Bigham, uh, she got caught up. There's Knox's numbers. And the Stefan Diggs play. Boom. And that one, Diggs had to go over 70 and a half yards. That did not happen. Uh, Diggs had three catches for just seven, seven yards. So uh, no win there for the Senator or for uh, KG on the prop plays from that game last night. That, of course, leaves us with our conference championships. We were going to go through a little bit of a preview for those games, but it doesn't really make sense to do that if I don't have KG with me. So um, that, of course, has Cincinnati at Kansas City, 2 p.m. Sunday, January 30th, 2 p.m. on that game, and the uh, San Francisco 49ers playing the L.A. Rams in the uh, NFC Championship game. That's happening at 5.30 on Sunday. And, of course, the 49ers have beaten the Rams in six consecutive contests. So one would think that the Rams are due. Uh, Jimmy's going to have to produce uh, a little bit more offense uh, than that. Uh, The senator was uh, weighing in, watching earlier. Appreciate your support. Nice job on the weekend, uh, Rookie of the Year, Senator Bigham, with your contributions. And uh, we'll talk for sure to nail down the schedules for both the senator and for um, KG throughout the course of the week. Right now, I have us back on Friday morning to preview the conference championship games for next weekend. I'll talk to both of them and see if that happens uh, with their schedule. We'll have to see what's happening with uh, KG and his uh, travels and his responsibilities where the Minnesota Wild are concerned. So that'll do it. Um, there you go for this episode of uh, It's Gorgomatic. Again, KG and I, and, and I think the state senator, will try to come back. Uh, Friday morning to preview the conference championship games for next weekend. That'll happen at 8.30. Until then, stay safe and remember, well, none of this, including when we lose our our star of the show, is automatic. It is and always will be 110% gorgomatic, and we wouldn't have it any other way.